Hi, I'm Elizabeth with Hamilton Native Outpost, and a common question we get this time of year is, what exactly am I looking for when I'm going out to look for my seedlings? What do they look like? So today in this video, we want to go over what a big blue stem seedling looks like, go over some of the fine characteristics, go over some of the ways you can tell it from the other things, go over some of the look-alikes, and then we'll move to the field and actually look at what it looks like in the field as well. So I have with me here a seedling. This is a first year seedling that we dug up this morning out of a first year planting of big blue stem. And so, you know, the seedlings can be variably sized. Of course, when they start off and they've newly germinated, they're just one simple leaf. Um, and then they keep growing and growing and getting more leaves to them. Um, and of course, sometimes by the end of that first year, you can actually have seed heads on the plant. And so it really just depends on a lot of factors like weed competition as to how big those seedlings get that first year. But at some point during the stage, it's going to look like this. Have multiple leaves on it. Uh, you can see that, you know, big picture, this plant is very upright. It's not like spreading across the ground. It's not trailing across the ground. It's very upright. So that's one characteristic I use to eliminate some things from it. Another characteristic that I pick up on real quick is the color. And color is a characteristic that you can sure use, and I sure pay attention to it, but I don't use it as like the identifying characteristic because it can vary from plant to plant or variety to variety. So with this plant, I noticed that the color is kind of blue-green. It's not like grass-grass green. It's not a dark green. It's kind of a blue-green. And there's also some purple colors. Sometimes those purple colors are on the stem. Sometimes those purple colors are on the leaves. With big blue stem, it's, it's fairly common to see some part of the leaf, even on a mature plant, that has those purplish, reddish, um, you know, dark, darkish colors on it. So that's kind of some of the things, just like when I'm looking at the whole plant, that I'm thinking about and looking at. Now I want to dig into the really fine detail. And when you're actually out in the field looking for this, you got to get your good eyeballs on to really pay attention to this and understand what some of these terms mean. So I've got a plant here that has been washed off, just for ease of seeing it. So this is a big blue stem plant. And this one has more, more purple reddish colors on it, especially on the stem here than the other one had but we've still got a big blue stem plant. So what characteristics am I looking for? Okay, let's get those good eyeballs out and let's go into those characteristics. Those detailed characteristics. The first detail that I'm looking at is the tiller base is flattened. Okay, so what is a tiller? Let's start there. This is a tiller, the stem of the grass. This is a tiller right here, this one there. Now, mind you, this purplish one is a leaf off of the main tiller, but this is a tiller. There's also a tiller over here. Uh, so it's like it has a stem kind of with leaves coming off of it. So that's a tiller. So at the base of that tiller, it's flattened. It's not like paper flat. It's not like it's been, you know, pressed in a book. It's not that flat, but it's sure not like a straw. It's not round like a straw. So it's fairly flattened at the base. You, you can't really roll it between your fingers. It's flat enough that it doesn't roll between your fingers well. Another characteristic for big blue stem is the hairiness of it. So there are a lot of coarse hairs. So they're big, they're, they're thick, they're very visible um, on the base of the tiller and on the base, well, on the tiller itself, and on the base of the leaves, the bottom, bottom part of that leaf, the lower half of the leaf, if you will, there's a lot of hairs there. And again, you have to get your good eyes out. Uh, sometimes it's useful to like get it backlit, kind of hold it up, not against the sun, but against the light. And that helps you to pick out those hairs and see them better if you're having a hard time picking those out. So looking for those, le those hairs, um, again, they're on the lower half of that leaf and on the tiller base. That really helps you to key in uh, and eliminate some of the other plants like the foxtails like, and others that don't have those big coarse hairs sticking off of them there. A third characteristic, 
my third characteristic is that the emergent leaves, the ones that are not fully colored, they come out rolled. So when I think of a rolled leaf, I think of if I have a piece of paper in my hands and I'm kind of bored, I roll that piece of paper up. And then, of course, my paper doesn't unfold into a nice flat paper anymore. But that rolledness of the paper, as opposed to taking the piece of paper and folding it in half. So some leaves come out of the plant folded in half, and some come out rolled. And so back to our big blue stem plant here. The big blue stem plant, if you look like down at this angle, so if you're looking down here, you can see that this leaf here is coming out in a rolled fashion. So it is not folded in half, but it is rolled up. Sometimes it's helpful to just go ahead and tear the plant up so that you can get a better look at how it's coming out. So the fourth detail characteristic that I have for the big blue stem seedling is the ligule. So there's a couple parts to this. One, you need to get your good eyes out again. Two, you need to know what a ligule is. So here we have our tiller, the stem of the grass, if you will. And off of it, we have leaf blades. So if we take a leaf blade and we pull this leaf blade back, you see what is called the sheath. So the sheath is this part right here that was like encompassing, it was like circled around, not completely circled around, but uh, kind of encasing the tiller, the, the stem of that grass. And so this is the blade, and here it meets the sheath. So at that junction is what we call a ligule. The ligule is right in here, and it has a ligule. Some things don't have a ligule. And so you have to, once you know what to look for, you can start to identify if it has a ligule and then what, the, what does the ligule look like. So on a big blue stem, the ligule is soft and membranous and it's kind of ragged on the top. Again, to get that seedling backlit, you can see it better, but the, the fact that it's not a hard ligule, it's more membranous, it's kind of soft, and it has that ragged top. Those are both really good characteristics to use for a big blue stem seedling. One last characteristic that I sometimes look for is, especially in a younger seedling, the seedling is kind of old to look for it on, is that I will, if you dig it up like this, um, you can actually look for the seed. And if you looked at the seed when you were planting and you know what that seed looks like, then you can see if you can find that and does that seed that's on the plant look like that or does it look like some other seed? So when you're looking for that seed, you're looking at the juncture basically of the, where the roots start and the green starts. Right at that juncture is where that seed will be. And so you can see if you can identify that, use that as a characteristic for identification as well. So before we go to the field, let's look at a couple lookalikes and use our characteristics that we've learned to tell them apart. I have here with me as well a broom sedge or sage grass seedling. One thing I immediately identify is this is so much flatter. It's also a flattened tiller base. It's also hairy, but the base of that tiller is a lot flatter than my big blue stem. Another characteristic I notice is that the leaf is coming out folded rather than rolled. And so that is a good characteristic and you can see what that looks like here. Another thing, once you get keyed in on what the broom sedge looks like as opposed to the big blue stem, is you can start to compare color. Again, color is a nice characteristic, but don't count on them all looking just alike, uh, especially but when you move from like one variety of, of big blue stem to another, say round tree to car, or OZ70 to car. When you move between those, often they have a little bit different look. But the color of these seedlings, I can begin to notice, and once I, can once I have them identified, I can start to pick out. They kind of both have a blue-green color, but the broom sedge is a little more pea green, if you will, a little more yellow to it. 
Um, not as much red colors, uh, red purple colors to it either. Um, although it does have some brownish red colors to it. So you can start to use that as a characteristic once you have identified your seedlings. But usually to me, it's something I don't use at first. It's what I use when I get keyed in to what the seedlings look like. Another seedling for compare and contrast. This is a foxtail seedling. And there's various types of foxtails and they look a little bit different. But a lot of them can actually be a little bit confusing against uh, our big blue stem seedling. Uh, so the form is very alike, right? They, they have a very similar look to them. I would say that the foxtail, of course, it's a little bigger, but it just depends on which plant you get as to whether it was bigger or not. Um, I will say that the foxtail seedling has, I don't know, the leaf arrangement is just a little bit different. If you get keyed in on that, the leaves come out at a different angle and whatever. But again, I think that's a characteristic you use further on in the process. At first, the things I'm gonna look at are the finer characteristics. And a big one to tell this foxtail apart is that the hairiness. There is some fine hairs on this foxtail. However, it's not the big coarse hairs of the big blue stem. And so once you get keyed in on that, it's really easy to tell these two apart. The leaves do both come out rolled. Um, so you can't use that characteristic. But it, and again, like the color, once I get keyed in, sometimes the color can help me to start picking them out across the field in a, like more, in a bigger way, not just plant by plant. Okay, now that we've really dug into the details of what this plant looks like, it's time to move to the field. Uh, we're gonna go out in the field with Colt, and he's going to show us what a newly planted field of a first year seedlings looks like a big blue stem. And we're gonna look at it in the context of the field. Now the field we're gonna to go to, uh, there's not a lot of annual weed competition in it. We treated this with an herbicide called Panoramic, which is very effective at eliminating a lot of the annual weed competition that would otherwise show up, the foxtails, the crabgrass, the ragweeds. Those annual weeds provide a lot of competition. So the seedlings we're gonna see in the field are widely spaced, like there's not a lot of weed pressure over them. Sometimes, in if say you planted it without that herbicide, or if you did a diverse planting and big blue stem is just a component of it, where you don't have that herbicide option, then the seedlings, it, it's gonna look dog hair thick with plants uh, because there's all sorts of annual weed competition in that field. So just keep in mind as we go to this field, your field may look a lot different or it may look very similar, but the characteristics of the big blue stem plant are the same, whether they're that size of this one, whether they're the, a smaller size, bigger size, and whether there's annual weed competition or not. So let's go to the field. So to look at big blue stem seedlings, we're looking at the ground here uh, around me and you can see a lot of little green sprigs showing up and you can see a lot of bare ground. We've got really good, uh, our herbicide took really good here and that's where the bare ground's from. It's kept the annual weeds from germinating. We have just a few annual weeds here in this field. This here is a common ragweed. This here is starting to develop a head. You can see that, that's foxtail. Uh, there's a lot of different foxtails and it is one that people frequently confuse with their seedling because it is very flat stemmed at the base, which your big blue stem will be flat stemmed as well. So it's one to keep in mind, it is not hairy. So that is a big key factor. There is a few hairs on the leaves, but it's not hairy like the big blue stem we'll look at in a bit. And that's part of the reason it's a good time of the year to get out and look uh, at your plantings because a lot of the annuals are starting to head and you can rule them out. So that's a few things to look at. Uh, out when you're you know kind of take in what you've got look at that and then start breaking apart the different plants because sometimes what looks very similar to one to another is actually your crop okay so right in here you there's a great example of where you need to if you just look at your field and you go oh it's just all this foxtail that you see but if you look really close right here you see how that one is different it's upright and it has a lot of hair along the leaves, uh, the base of the leaves, a lot of hair. It's upright, it doesn't branch out close to the ground like your foxtail does. 
here's another one right here and it even has the same purple leaf where that one is uh, as it gets drier that one the plants uh, pruning it off and they're gonna grow from there and it even has a tiller coming out the side this is a big blue stem you can tell by the hair the upright nature of it um, the lighter blue color of the leaves is another good indicator of big blue stem seedlings and adult plants but at first it looks like just all foxtail but you start breaking it apart and that's your actual big blue seedlings now don't expect your all your seedlings in the field to be the same size this one here is also a big blue stem quite a bit bigger than the last ones we look at my hands would be about nine inches tall from there to the ground so this seedlings off to a good start and right here beside it though you've got one that uh, whether there's a rock under there I can't really tell you that's also a big blue stem you're looking at two two and a half inches tall don't worry about your shorter ones they're off to a good start as well uh, the big blue stem is very similar to like an oak tree it doesn't have to get up there and make acorns the first year it's got a long life ahead of it this is how they work they develop the root system and then next year these will turn into really nice tall plants so this has been a fairly dry year which is part of the reason we've got really good chemical control with our pre-emergent panoramic that we used or mazepec is active ingredient you could if it was a if it was a wetter year we've been dry the last three four weeks while it's been getting hot and the natives really start to grow you could have native grass this tall already so this is running a little bit behind it's a little dry but they got good plant color they're not wilting in the middle of the day the soil is pretty dry but there's really no reason to worry this is why people are planting a lot of the big blue and the native warm season grasses they're very efficient with water they're getting along just fine this planting's off to a really good start. So this has been Cole Hamilton with Hamilton Native Outpost, and we appreciate your time. Uh, we're real passionate about native plants and their uses, and like to educate people about it.